Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market, right? And, you know, I said yesterday, Jerome Powell great, gave the market the green flag and or green light, say go. But I don't think anybody expected it to take off that fast. And, oh yes, did it. Mm-hmm. Tell you what, he can live in denial all he wants about financial conditioning, not loosening, and all this other stuff. But, yeah, that was crazy today, especially we're going to talk about meta and stuff like that. Now, we just had earnings, which people you know, were all panicked when they came out. And I said, give it a minute. Apple, Amazon, Google, they go, oh, oh my God, they're going to bring down the market. And I'm like, there's Apple, down half a percent as I'm talking right now. Amazon down 1.21%. Google down three. <clears throat> this is after both Amazon and Google ran up over 7% today. And Apple ran up almost 4%. So yeah, and understand it was Google, depending on which source you read, had a double miss. Or one source says it beat, barely beat revenue, missed EPS. Uh, Amazon, I believe, had a, I believe they actually had a double beat, and, and Apple had, I mean, terrible earnings. It, it missed both top and bottom line. But once again, you know, what did we talk about? And this is where, and again, this is a jam-packed video, so I'll get into all this stuff as soon as possible. But understand. But I tell you, this is a game. It's like a casino, right? It's like a movie theater, trying to keep you in suspense, stuff like that. I understand the narrative. That's why I talked about Goldman Sachs, Netflix. You have to pay attention to the er the earnings and realize what is the market looking for here because it changes, right? For 10 years, it was all about growth. Oh my God, growth, growth, growth. Now, what I tell you, I said, there's a reason why I pointed out when you see companies missing EPS by 50% and the markets don't care and they still rally, right? And what you see with Meta, we're going to get into the chart because that was crazy, right? Terrible earnings. I mean, missed EPS by 50%. I mean, it was just a mess, right? But as I told the members this morning, what, what do they say? The two magic words. We're cutting costs, laying people off, and we're buying back shares, baby. Because none of this move is fundamental. None of it. All right? There's no way you can say it's fundamental, right? But that's, that's what you got to understand the narrative. So what are they looking for? They're looking for companies to be cutting costs, right? Trying to save the margins the best they can. Buying back their stock. And they say, well, maybe we'll get growth later on. Because even, I think, Amazon, the CEO or CFO, come, said, come out today and said, yeah, we're worried about consumer spending. That's for sure. You know, you've seen some of the uh, semiconductor companies come out and say, yeah, first quarter is going to be really rough. You know, and so that's what you have to understand. And I did a members video last night showing exactly what this move is right now. It can turn into something else, but exactly why the market is moving like it is. Okay, and why it's moving so fast. And so that kind of it really explains it. But, you know, let's get into Meta real quick. Good. Look at this chart. Look at this chart right here. Oh, my goodness. I mean, 23% on one day for a big cap stock like that. Look at that gap. I mean, I was telling them, hey, there was a gap right above. We got to fill this gap and see if we can turn it like into support. Forget that. And look at the RSI on the daily. Look at that. Man, you think that thing's due for a pullback? Might be. I mean, look at the weekly. We're actually approaching overbought on the weekly and that's really hard by the way and so i mean if you if you find i always said that if you find a stock that's overbought or oversold in the weekly you need to get your money ready because there's going to be a, a pullback at some point in time and it's probably gonna be a pretty nice one that's usually how it works and you can see i mean when it gets overbought and these don't look like big moves but these are like 10 to 15 percent pullbacks this is a weekly chart and so you got to understand, you know, versus going in at 308, you go in there at two, was it 247 or something? No, if you get that, that's great. Okay, so that's what you got to start looking for. And this is what I'm talking about right here. This just came out today about these earnings calls, right? And the number of times these companies are mentioning like the staff numbers, how many people they actually have. And as you can see, it's really high. It hadn't been this high since 09 when the market was crashing. This is what tells you, this is what... You know, people who are buying the hedge funds, the rich folks, this is what they're looking at right now. This is the part of the cycle it's in. So that's what we got to pay attention going forward. It's, it's about the head count. It's about cutting costs, cutting capex, whatever it is you got to do to cut and increasing your share buybacks. Okay. It's not about growth right now or any of that mess. That's just the way it is. It's about falling yields. Uh, it's about uh, the, the conditions loosening, financial conditions that is, things like that. That's what's driving the market right now. And the reason why you know that Look at what's really moving up. When you have, I said, when you have companies that are, I mean, their business models are terrible. Some of them don't even have business models. And they're up three, 400, 500% in like 40 days. Sounds like Christmas, right? When you see that going on, why am I, am I the only one I keep asking this question that I have, like the day I look at my phone and I'm like, is this 2020? Is, it, is this 2020? Like what's going on? I know the government ain't sending out checks, but 
some of these stocks that are penny stocks now are just mooning, right? It's just like, hey, all right, everything's good. I mean, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I, I just want to put in the comments, is it just me when I'm seeing some of this stuff? But, you know, obviously, you know, going into Tesla, that's another one you look at. And this is something to pay close attention to, is I saw some tweets on this one today. You know, Tesla had a huge move up this morning, blew right through where you thought it'd be, closed the gap right there, which we had talked about, and then immediately, you know, started trading sideways and did a reversal after it got to the 190s and stuff. And you got to understand, first of all, it ran into the 100 moving average on the daily chart. Then it's got this gap fill. And what do people love to do when you see uh, hitting a moving average do a gap fill? They like to short the stock and take profits, right? And so when you look at it, it did a really quick reversal back down to 184 from like 196, I believe was the high today. And it did it uh, pretty fast once it started heading down. And the real reason this thing got, to me, just halted with a quickness is because of this right here. And I put this in here because this 200 call wall this expiring tomorrow. That's why. Look at that. That's a wall for you, right? Why would they want to pay that out this week? If they let this go over 200 tomorrow, at least before like 3.50 in the afternoon, I'll be stunned. But that's why you saw the brakes get put on really, really fast. And if you had to be an expert at shorting stocks, like it's something you do all the time, if you know of a source that you can share with me, that I can share with everybody to prove whether this is just profit taking on Tesla or as I got tweets blowing on my phone saying this is a great time to short. And some people did at 196, I believe it was, which means, of course, those don't know when you short, you're literally selling the stock and hoping to buy it back at a lower price. So that would flood the market with shares, of course, and would drive the stock price down. Right. And so if you know a source that you can, it shows you like, yes, this is what happened. People started shortening a massive uh, amount here or not. Please share it. If not, no big deal. Or if you have a way to even look at something and tell it, let me know. And, you know, going into the queues, what do you see on the queues? Man, we thought it was going to fill this gap. It blew right through the gap. It blew over the gap. And so you still have this gap right here. Again, look at the RSI. Getting overbought right there on the daily, right? And so things are getting really, really frothy at this point in time. Don't mean they can't keep going. But, you know, they're starting to leave behind some gaps now. And that's not, you know, and these gaps are going to get filled. I don't care what... Anybody says it's going to happen at some point in time. And here's the good news. What do you see happening all of a sudden? Man, people are buying calls again. Look at that. The calls are far away in the puts right now. It's the queues. This is the spy. So people are starting to buy calls again, which is, is something new, actually, believe it or not. And here's what I'm talking about. I showed you this yesterday about the Dow, right? The Dow was red all day. It was down even more this morning while the queues are up over 3% because what's happening? And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it. And if you're getting anything out of this, please hit the like and think about sharing the video, guys. You're seeing big money rotate out of defensive stocks right now, and they're rotating into high beta stocks right now, right? And so how long that last? Who knows? What to find out. But you see that right there. That's that's just a just big money rolling in, still pushing it, still pushing. They've been pushing. Right now, when are they going to pull the rug or when are we going to have a nice pullback? We're definitely due for a healthy pullback at some point in time. And if you want this market to go higher, that's what we need. You need some kind of consolidation or something. These gaps up like this and days like today seems all great. But in the long run, you want to start seeing some consolidation and some pullbacks. OK, and what's curious to me, I remember why couldn't the market go down? Because all the puts, the market makers weren't going to let it go down. It'll be curious to see on the flip side. Now you're seeing all these calls being bought up. Will the market makers actually allow, or how long will they allow this to continue, right? Because they're not going to pay out all those options. No way. No way they want to do that. And what's happening also is you got people still shorting the market. Well, of course, they're having to cover, right? And so at some point in time, we're going to run out of the short fuel, as I like to call it, when shorts are going to stop covering because they basically covered all they're going to do. And, you know, how long will the market makers allow this to take place? At what levels will they stop it before you get a nice, healthy pullback that's really what we got to look at because if you look right now what i mean by frothy the fear and greed index i look at is at 81 percent right now and you see that is extreme greed and when that happens again it can stay up there for a little while but visually you do get a nice pullback okay so and a lot of people are, are waiting on that to try to get in positions or whatever they're not going to chase this and i'm glad i'm not the only one by the way that and i'm sorry for that bird but i'm not going to like take the bird out or anything it just goes crazy at this time but you know when you uh, I compare the market to what drug addicts, right? And Mike Wilson came out today, and I'm glad I'm not the only one that says this. So Mike Wilson from Morgan Stanley says, once people realize the Fed's not cutting rates, there's no more heroin, so to speak. Then we're going to price the fundamentals 
which are clearly deteriorating in our view. And he's right. I mean, the, the fundamentals, yeah, they're deteriorating, right? And so, but the whole thing about this premise is the Fed pause, Fed's going to cut rates, right? That's what they're, that's, that's what everybody's waiting on. So this whole move is, is based off of them and stuff, right? And because again, I'll show you some economic data. It's not good. You know, I mean, look, look at this gap right here between ISM manufacturing and then the S&P. And you see the S&P is way up. ISM manufacturing data is way down. These are new orders, right? And you can go across this chart and usually kind of go hand in hand. And so that is an enormous gap. Like something is either off in the data or the market's getting way too far ahead of itself. And so, you know, as you can see, I saw it one other time when it happened and you saw a big drop in the market, right? And this, of course, is the job opening. So you can see this. We hadn't had a report like that going back all the way to February of, or I'm sorry, excuse me, March of 2021. Right. And so that's just enormous. And then tomorrow, looking at data coming out, talking about, you know, payroll and stuff, you got non farm payrolls, unemployment rates coming out, people expecting a little uptick at 3.6. That's, you know, could that affect markets? Sure. Absolutely. It could affect markets. It should if the market pays attention to it. But right now, it's ignoring all this stuff. Then you can have earnings for us coming out. And then the other one is ISM non manufacturing PMI. And so, will the market actually react to that? I kind of look at it this way and think, you know what? If Apple, Amazon, and Google, which basically hold a lot of weight in the indexes, if those earnings and those misses didn't like bring down the market, and we'll see what happens in the morning. But just looking at it right now, it's like, oof, okay. Because Apple was down and it came back up, right? And if that's not bringing down the market and Meta's earnings shot it up 23% in one day, I mean, a job support is really going to bring down the market now? Really? I mean, <laughs> maybe so, but... You know, I think right now, obviously the market's going to, you know, contract, expand, contract, expand. Right now we need a little contraction. I think you're going to see more people kind of load in. Right now you see, what are you seeing? A lot of, every dip there is gets bought up, right? Every dip there is. And so, I'm, again, I'm curious to see if the call walls start to be put in place, like the put walls were, which didn't allow us to go down, will we be allowed to continue to go up? And I think we'll be continue, obviously allowed to continue to go up, but at this rate is is nuts, right? And I'll show you a chart tomorrow to show you when you have a January and the Qs like we just had when it's over 10%, I'll show you tomorrow uh, what you can look at for the next year that could happen. But, you know, again, remember what the markets do. This ain't fundamentals. This is, hey, let's run it up because we're anticipating rate pause and we're anticipating rate cuts. And if we're wrong, this is the, the institution I'm talking about, we'll just sell everything and just short the crap out of the market. Right, that that's what they always do. It's rinse, repeat. That's what they've always done. Just look, pull up the Fed funds rate, pull up the cues of the spy. You'll see what I'm talking about, okay? And so, or you can join the membership. You can see the videos I put out, and I'll show it to you myself, okay? So anyway, let me know what you're do, doing, guys. What you think about the market and stuff, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah.